Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our virtual open day today. My name's Amy Smith, and I'm the Marketing Manager here at East Coast College. Just before we get started, I just wanted to make you aware that we will be recording today's session. Um, this will be for any students that were unable to attend, so we can share the details with them later. Um, but none of your details will be able to be seen on the recording. And we've also got the Q&A box, um, which you should see in the bar below. We're happy to take your questions throughout the presentation, and we'll either answer those as we go through or at a ded dedicated slot at the end um, when we'll have a, a question and answer session. So today we're going to be hearing from Stuart Rimmer, the Chief Executive of East Coast College, Keith Shields, the Principal of Lowestoft Sixth Form College, and Nikki Lane, our Assistant Principal for Student Support and Wellbeing. We're also going to be hearing from a couple of our current students who are going to talk to you about their college experiences. And we're joined by four of our Assistant Principals, Holly Chase, Pam Burt, Rachel Bunn, and Kerry Payne, who will be able to answer some of your questions as well. So let's get started. And uh, let me first introduce our Chief Executive, Stuart Rimmer. So good afternoon everyone, uh, my name is Stuart, I'm the, uh, the Chief Executive and Principal here at East Coast College. Um, so hosting a virtual open day is a first for us today, so we're really pleased uh, for so many of you to join us uh, on, the, on the call this afternoon and taking a little bit of time to find out uh, what uh, is so good uh, and why our college is so special. I think choosing the, the right place to study is probably one of the most important decisions you'll have faced so far. Um, so I'm really pleased you're keen to find out a little bit more about East Coast College and how we can help you achieve those skills and qualifications that you're going to need to, to reach that dream job. Now East Coast College is the largest Ofsted good provider in Great Yarmouth and Waveney, which means not only we're the biggest, but we're also the best. Uh, and we're also the uh, largest provider of STEM subjects uh, in, in the region. Now 98% of our students who study with us progress on to higher education, onto apprenticeships, uh, or employment and in our sixth form college that Keith will tell you a little bit more about in a moment uh, we're in the top 25 percent of, of colleges in the country all of our staff are industry specialists and that makes them very very special uh, because they their passion will show through in all of the achievement uh, but also their sort of technical uh, expertise we've got a really really wide range of courses all available on our, on our website if you find a little bit more about or you can ask questions later on uh, but we've got a course pretty much for everyone, regardless of the stage in, in your life or, or where you are in your learning. Now for school leavers, we've got an extensive list of subject areas where you can progress through the levels and, and learn those skills you need to work in those industries. And these include animal science and arts and design, beauty therapy, carpentry, brickwork, childcare, engineering, fashion, health and social care, performing arts, sport, uniform public services, and so many, many more. Now, when studying these courses, what makes us special is you're going to get hands-on practical experience as well as classroom learning, and that will allow you to complete those exams and assessments uh, to gain those nationally recognised qualifications that are really important for you. Also, in our sixth form, uh, we've got A-levels and BTEC programmes and, and GCC courses, uh, and Keith will tell you a little bit about those in a moment. At East Coast College, we also offer apprenticeship programmes uh, where we can combine uh, work-based learning um, so it gives you a chance to, to earn while you learn. And we work with over 600 employers uh, across the region to help you find those apprenticeship places. And then finally, our higher education courses at East Coast College give you a chance to take those next steps and achieve a degree qualification studying on your doorstep. So we've got a fantastic partnership with the University of Suffolk, uh, and these allow us to study a wide range of degree courses on both our campuses in Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth. And our access courses and adult shore courses are absolutely perfect for those people who are looking to retrain uh, and build on their existing qualifications. And as I said earlier, our website has got full details of all of these courses. Um, but if you get uh, stuck in any way, just give us a call and we'll, and we'll answer any questions you might have. We have uh, some fantastic facilities at East Coast College uh, in, in both our campuses in Lowestoft and Great Yarmouth. Uh, for example, last year we opened a brand new 11.4 million pound energy skills centre in the Lowestoft campus, where we get some world class facilities in, in engineering and energy, including things like sort of hydraulics and pneumatics and training rigs and, and a world class maritime uh, training uh, simulation equipment. So that's really, really good stuff. 
We have fitness and gym facilities at both of our campuses, which are free for students to use. Uh, we've even got our own on-site salons where students can book in for treatments and, and get discounted uh, haircuts, of course, after lockdown finishes. And uh, we've got dedicated higher education centres at uh, both of our, our, our sites as well, uh, along with international education centres of excellence for childcare, uh, and also our own dog grooming salon, uh, which is called Murphy Muddy Paws. We've got some really lovely performance spaces with state-of-the-art sound and technology equipment for all of our performing arts students and some brilliant studios uh, as well. So fundamentally for me, why do you like to choose East Coast College? Well, I, I always talk to students and say, you're gonna get three things when you study with us. The first is you're gonna get those skills and qualifications that you're gonna to need to be successful in your, in your future career. Secondly, you're going to, uh, we're gonna guarantee you a good progression that might be to another course, it might be to higher education at the university or into an apprenticeship, but we're gonna make sure you get to where you want to go. And finally, and the most important thing I think, is that while you're with us, we're gonna help develop your well-being, your character, so that you become that rounded individual. It's not just about skills and qualifications for us, but it's about looking after you as a whole person. Now our support uh, for our students at East Coast College is absolutely stunning. Uh, we're really, really good at it. That might be support on your course from your tutor, or it might be through our student services and well-being teams or, or lots of other support mechanisms we put in place to make sure that you're going to be successful when you study with us. Uh, what you need to bring to us, well, I'd, I'd love for you to bring your hard work, your commitment and your passion. Uh, and if you do that, I'll guarantee you'll be successful uh, on your college course, but hopefully you'll also have a bit of fun. So hopefully that gives you a quick overview of uh, why, uh, what it's like to study at our college and what you can really expect. And I know you're going to have loads of questions uh, for thinking about starting in September. Uh, and I just want you to know our team is going to be with you every step of the way. We're going to make sure, uh, I know it's difficult times right now, but make sure you really do get the advice and help you need in order to start with us in September. So uh, we're excited you, for you to join us and become part of our college community, of which we're really proud of. And uh, hopefully I'll see you all in person in September. Brilliant. Thanks ever so much, Stuart. Um, I think we'll move straight over to Keith now. So um, introducing Keith Shields, um, the principal of Lowe's Sixth Form College, who's going to talk to you about um, what we offer at our sixth form. Thank you, Amy. And uh, a very warm welcome to everybody on the webinar. Uh, my name, as, uh, as you've just been uh, just heard, is Keith Shields, and I'm the principal of the Sixth Form College. Uh, I've been basically working in the college since it opened from 2011. Um, before then, as perhaps some of your parents or might have been actually taught by me, I've been working in local schools for over 26 years. Some of you have just done the maths, have probably worked out that I've been in local education for 35 years. But I'm immensely proud to be the principal of the Lowest of Six Horn College. The college was built in 2011. It is an outstanding learning environment. I remember when I first saw it and I came through the door, I actually sort of sat there with my mouth dropped to the floor saying, my word, they have built it. I've only seen the architect's plans before and any of anybody who comes through the door, you will probably notice it's cathedral-like. It's large, it's spacious, it's airy and very, very light. It's an outstanding learning environment. And it should be, because it cost over 25 million pounds to build in 2011. And it was built to provide a first class education for students, local students. So that's why we want you to use it. Uh, going to my uh, PowerPoint, uh, looking at my PowerPoint now, well, the first one I'm looking at, uh, the outstanding learning environment. The second one is obviously the extensive curriculum choice. We are in an inclusive building. We have a range of uh, obviously qualifications which we offer. They range from A-levels, level three B-techs, level two B-techs, uh, GCSEs, and uh, occasionally functional skills for, uh, for certain students. So we're an inclusive inv inv learning environment with an extensive curriculum choice. I also really want to bring your attention to the fact is that we're constantly updating our curriculum as well. We have three new courses which we want to publicize to students who may be interested in them. We are starting an environmental science A-level in September. We're also starting a computer science course and a philosophy and ethics course, which will all be basically starting in the September when you get there. 
if you wanted to change or if you wanted to actually join one of these uh, uh, courses and change some of your offers, you can do so. And we will provide you that sort of information, not in this webinar, but another, an, in a, at another time. Uh, I'm pleased to say that, you know, this extensive curriculum is taught by some of the most experienced and special teachers you'll get in any college anywhere in Britain. Uh, I'm absolutely overwhelmed sometimes by the levels of support, the extra mile our students, uh, you know, our teachers will actually provide for our students. Uh, it was very noticeable on the exit surveys of our students last year that one of the biggest things that they say about the college is the friendly support from their teachers and the fact that their teachers will go this extra mile to make sure they're successful. Uh, you know, exceptional teachers, a wonderful learning environment. Well, outstanding results year after year. I'm very, very pleased and very, very proud of the college results for the last four years. This isn't just a flash in the pan that we get these wonderful results. For four years in a row, we've provided Lowestos and surrounding area students fantastic results. The results last year and for the last four years uh, for A-levels, have been 99.7% pass rate. Uh, one of the years we achieved 100% pass rate, which we aim every year. On another measure, the outstanding results, if we look at the value added, and that is the progress made by a student when they enter and when they left, they measured by a value added measure. As Stuart has already mentioned, for the last four years, the college has been in the top 25% nationally. Uh, achieving this uh, progress made by students. Uh, if I drill down a little bit, some of our uh, subject areas, some of our teachers have actually been in the top 5% and even the top 1%. I'll draw your attention to our M courses, both BTEC and obviously A-level, who have achieved this year after year. Obviously, looking at this chemistry, an outstanding learning environment, a big curriculum choice, experienced teachers, and outstanding results, we have happy learners. And happy learners who are prepared for their next steps. We open up progression routes for our students. And as, as I say, their exit forms say, they are happy and feel well prepared for their next steps. Thank you for listening. Amy? Brilliant, thank you, Keith. Um, Keith, now while we're on the theme of the sixth form, we're gonna pass you over to one of our current students. Um, Archie currently attends Low Soft Sixth Form College and is going to be speaking today a bit about his experiences at the college. Um, so, Archie, if I can introduce you to everybody, please. Hello. Yeah, um, so I'm Archie. Um, I've been at the Sixth Form College now for the past two years and um, I've studied three A-levels there and they were Geography, Sociology and Criminology. And... Um, so I, I chose to study at Lowest of Sixth Form because for me, it was by clear the best local provider, um, considering I'm only 20 minutes bike ride away, um, but I could have gone to other colleges like East Norfolk um, and in the surrounding area as well. But for me, Lowest of Sixth Form stood out because of, um, as Keith has already spoken on, the, the really solid pass rate that um, the, the college year by year sort of exceeds and almost continues to produce. And for me, that was really... Um, it gave me confidence to know that what I was choosing, I was going to come at the end of the day and sort of reach where I wanted to go with my future. Um, so that's where I ended up at Lurse or Sixth Form, um, really enjoying myself there as well. Uh, but the, the real reason why I chose to study as well was because when I went on my open day, or, albeit it wasn't virtual, um, I did meet some of the staff and um, just seeing how passionate they were for their subjects was enough to sort of for me to make up my mind that that's where I wanted to go and, and study with these people um, that really were experts in what they're teaching. Um, so my three courses that I studied, I found that the, the quality of teaching was amazing. Um, you do tend to notice a step up, well I, I did from GCC to A level, um, with the knowledge and skills that you'll need, but this has really helped massively by the staff uh, and there was a big support network and um, you know their expertise really really do help you to sort of feel comfortable with what you're learning and um so the courses that i study as well um we had a vibrant mix of aspects to our learning and we never really just stuck like textbook by textbook and um, which was great for me 
because I, I think I'm more of a visual learner anyway. Um, but some some days, like in geography, um, we would do uh, practical learning about the course. Where um, I recall one day we made tectonic plates out of play day. Um, which really shows like a, an abstract mix to, to our learning and, it, and it, no two days were ever the same. Um, so thinking about some of the best things for the college, it was definitely, as Keith has mentioned, the, the big open plan that when you walk in and you see it all, the big open space, it's very welcoming and very sociable as well. Um, this is very, this is complemented very well by having smaller little quiet spaces in rooms where you can study by yourself and uh, you, you can have a quieter time uh, learning there, which I also found a, a great help to be in a smaller room. Um, so another thing that was really good for me was the support network that the college offers, uh, especially with the student services at the sixth form. And there was always, always someone that would listen to you if you wanted to talk about uh, any matter of what it was at all. But this is definitely something that I found um, very beneficial when I was college president for the last year where myself and Jordan the vice president had uh, a lot of support in making a difference and uh, changing what we thought mattered to us and making a big difference in the local area like with the uh, the litter picks that we organized and we received big support and we were able to push through health and safety and get everyone on board and it was it was great there's a lot of lot of support there um but currently now my plan for the future after being at the sixth one for two years is to um, eventually head to university whether or not that will be at the end of this year we'll find out but uh, that will be then to study environmental geography uh, hopefully in Scotland um, but that's as it stands um, the, the college is a great place and the sixth form definitely stands out but thank you that's brilliant. Thank you, Archie. Thanks so much for joining us and for sharing your experiences. I'm sure that's really helpful for some of the students thinking about joining us. So that, that's great. Thank you. Um, now I'm going to pass over to um, Nikki Lane, who is our Assistant Principal for Student Support and Wellbeing. Um, and she's going to be talking to you a bit about um, some of the support we offer for our students. Um, in terms of transport, finance, that kind of thing. Um, so Nikki, if I can hand over to you. Mm -hmm. Hello everybody, um, thank you for joining us. Um, so I'm going to take you through uh, the various aspects of student services. Student services is all about supporting you and by you I mean if you're a student about to join us, you're just thinking about actually uh, what you're going to do for your future, whether you're a parent, a carer or a professional joining us, um, supporting a, yo a young person or an adult actually thinking about um, joining the college to, to start their journey with us. Um, so from that beginning point of kind of thinking about what's next um, for you student services is there to, to support you all the way through the different aspects of of that journey right the way through to the end point where you where you leave us and you move into higher education apprenticeships employment as you've heard um, from our um, colleagues um, earlier in the seminar um, so I'm just going to kind of take you through what's on, on the screen. Um, if you're listening via audio and you haven't got access to, um, to see the screen, um, I'm going to be reading out um, an, a help email. So you can email, get in touch, and somebody can actually um, talk through all of these different aspects uh, of help um, to support you to um, access the college. Um, so I'm just going to start uh, with applications. So there's various ways that you can uh, apply to the college. Uh, one of the main ways that our students use um, is through the websites. It's a really good starting point because you can do a bit of research about the courses that, that we have, find out a, a little bit more detail about support um, and actually put in your applications um, through those websites. So you would just go into the website, find the page course that you're interested in um, and then you can follow the instructions to um, apply um, straight away. It's really, really easy and quick um, for you to access it that way. If you're currently in a Norfolk school, you can use the um, help you choose function um, and schools will um, in Norfolk will support you and you can apply to um, the sick form that way, um, even though it's in Suffolk, um, it's just it's based in Norfolk schools um, for using that process. Very similar to applying on the website, you find your course, click on it and apply that way. Um, if you're not comfortable with doing either of those things, um, then or you don't have access to, to do that, um, then you can um, just give us a ring and actually one of our team will talk you through the application form um, and, and do that with you. So you, they, you're not kind of missing out at all um, in being able to do that. 
Um, so we are here to help with any questions and I would ask anybody just to get in touch really um, to, to find out more about um, the courses that you're interested in, ask questions about the types of support that are available to you um, and please make sure that when those application forms are, are completed Put in as much detail as you can because that helps us when it arrives with us in um, student services to make sure that we've got the support there ready to help you either with the interview or to support that transition um, um, as you kind of before you join essentially and once you've joined throughout. Okay. Um, so just to kind of move um, move on through um, the PowerPoint, I'll move to special educational um, needs and disabilities and send. We have um, additional learning support available for, um, for students with special educational needs and disabilities, and we offer a, a wide range um, of support. Um, so just to give you some examples of, um, of support needs that, uh, where we're helping our students, um, it might include dyslexia, um, dyscalculia, dyspraxia, autism spectrum disorder, mental health difficulties, um, ADHD, sensory impairment, or physical um, and medical conditions. As that, that's by no means exhaustive, but it actually gives you a, an example of the types of things actually, uh, and support needs that you can get in touch and start to talk to us about to, to help you. When you apply, and just linking back to the applications, you'll have the chance to um, share with us um, if you do need um, additional support, um, and please do that because at that point that we get the application form, um, we will make sure there's somebody then there to support you with the interview, um, uh, and it kind of begins at that, that point from, uh, early on. So in terms of the range of support on offer, um, I've mentioned the support on interview, but that then moves through to actually talking about assistive technology um, or in-class support, or at the moment, um, that support via um, video call, uh, video conference for, for our students. Um, it might be around mobility, exam access, or um, specialist careers and uh, advice and guidance um, for students with, with SEND. If you have, um, if you have um, a special educational need or disability or an education healthcare plan, or you might have had support in the past, please just get in touch with us and let us know so we can kind of talk through what those options are for you. So I've just mentioned about um, career support on offer. Um, so I've moved through to, um, to careers and really that is a whole college input. Um, we have specialist um, and trained careers advisor advisors on access for, um, for students uh, but it's not just about that it's a whole college ethos when you come to the college um, you get support from the specialist teachers that we've already heard about um, during the webinar um, and they are arranging with you um, to kind of look at your careers plans and review them all the way through the year. But getting in specialist speakers, um, Archie mentioned um, about some of the activities that he's been involved with. Um, and actually all courses um, for study programmes will actually have an opportunity to kind of get involved with listening to specialist speakers, with industry experience or work experience or work related activities, which might be um, might be a, a guest speaker, for example. So there's a whole range of different ways that students find out about the world of, of work and also how to develop themselves um, in their career. We give students the um, opportunity to, um, to learn how to do research themselves around their career. Um, and also, if you're just kind of thinking about coming to college, our websites provide um, some websites that you can access to start kind of getting into that research and finding out what the progression routes um, are best for you. You can ask questions at the interview process. Um, so whether you're talking directly to, um, to the teacher or you're talking to um, admissions team, um, you can ask, ask questions that, that we can um, support you with. We have um, quality standards in place. So we, um, we have uh, kind of checked up on by Ofsted and we've had some really positive um, feedback from them um, recently with our um, grading of good. But we, we also have quality standards in matrix um, and quality in career standard. And what those do is actually just check what our processes are, how we deliver, making sure that we're giving our students the best possible chance to learn about careers and, and move forward and you know, find out the options that are best for them. Careers and well-being at, at the college link very closely together. Um, just kind of speaking um, uh, about 
positive feedback. We've got um, a Beacon Award um, where we've been commended for our positive approach to mental health, uh, which is really, really positive, two years in a row there. Um, we offer self-help and providing support. So we're really all about um, making sure that students can access support to help themselves, but then when they need somebody to actually be there for them, one-to-one um, -one, or whether we need to bring in an, an expert um, specialist to support them, um, we've got access to over 80, 80 partners to be able to do that. Um, our students can access a virtual learning environment, which is called Moodle, um, and we post information on Moodle so that can be accessed by any student and as parents and carers actually have access to to be able to see information there too. So some of the ways that we um, that we support our students in um, in kind of learning and kind of that kind of holistic approach um, to the, to you as a whole person um, in this tutorial means that apart from looking at, at employability skills, we're also looking at positive mental health and well-being, looking at action for happiness. We provide clubs or we advertise local clubs and activities. Uh, we're linked really, really closely with our multi-faith network. Stuart mentioned we've got gyms on both sites. They're free to students. Um, and, and actually that kind of links in very closely with some of those enrichment activities that our students are getting involved with. So they are helping the community. Um, for Over the last few weeks, examples of volunteering at hospital, baking cakes, um, our counselling students on degrees are, are offering a befriending service. Some of our construction students in the past have actually been renovating projects, supporting food banks, um, um, homelessness, and also getting involved um, in world sc um, skills competitions. Um, so it's really, really kind of positive activity going on in our local area. Students can get involved in the college, and that's really, really key for us. There's different ways that students can get involved, whether that's with their curriculum team um, and talking to their manager about developing the courses and their experiences for their learning. Um, but also they can um, become part of the um, NUS, National Union of Students. Archie mentioned about um, student councils, um, and that's really important. So students have got kind of various different options in how they might want to, to get involved uh, and to feedback. Um, so at the moment, for example, every week we're running a, a student involvement session where students kind of come in on a Zoom meeting and we ask questions for feedback. And then I feed that back directly through to, um, to Stuart and the senior leadership team. So we're keeping in touch with, uh, with our students' experience and how they want to develop things. And one of the questions yesterday was any ideas for the taster sessions coming up for year 11s who are, are joining us. So that will, that will play through to those curriculum teams and that voice will get heard. We have a um, safeguarding team on site across all three um, of our campuses and they're there to help students at any point in the student journey um, if they need help to keep themselves or friends and families um, safe um, and also if they want advice to keep it, keeping safe online you know, particularly at the moment um, yeah, that's quite, um, quite a common question for parents particularly. Um, we just ask um, you to let us know if you've got any concerns and then we'll provide um, advice and support. I'll just move on to um, student finance, which I think FAMI can take us through. Um, actually, before you go, Amy, sorry, I just need to mention the here to help um, email address. So here to help at eastcoast.ac.uk. Um, that's for the sick form and for the college. Rather than put lots and lots of different um, email addresses um, on here, I just wanted to put that one as the main one. If you get in touch with um, any questions that you have, you don't have to put anything confidential in there at all. Please just keep, um, keep it to the theme that you would like to speak about, and then we'll make sure that that goes out to, to the right person, and then you can um, talk through the, the question you have or, or the concern you have. Um, and I've got the website details just there on, uh, on the screen as well. The information I'm talking about is, is available there too. So if I move on to student finance, so student finance um, are a team available across the campuses and their, their main aim really is to kind of support you in finding out about the, um, the different financial um, and funding options that you've got available to you. Um, so that might be um, about the best way to travel to college if you need to travel, uh, about discretionary learn support fund, about free college meal schemes that we offer, 16 to 19 vulnerable student bursary and care to learn which is available for um, student parents under um, 20. 
Um, the advanced learn alone is an option um, too for 19 plus students on a level three um, course or above. Um, and we'll be able to, uh, student finance will be able to kind of give you more details about your individual circumstances if, if you get in touch with them. Uh, we have one of our colleagues um, with us, Vanessa, from the team. Um, she'll be able to answer any very general questions, but not individual because it is, um, obviously we don't want to put anything um, um, confidential um, out here um, on the webinar. Um, so for the discretionary learner support fund and the 16 to 19 vulnerable student bursary and free school meal, free college meal, sorry, um, those applications are open from um, July. Um, you can find the details of how to get in touch with us on, on the website. So it's not something you have to write down right now. Um, but you can also find out a little bit more about the Care to Learn childcare funding and the advanced learner loan on the government websites that are set up, um, particularly with information there. Okay, I have included the, um, the student finance um, email. I think it's just on the next slide. It's okay. Yep, there we go. Um, so yes, yeah, we've got the, both, the, both the college websites there. Um, so you can get student finance um, email from those um, to, to link in when you need to and get support with those applications. Okay, thank you very much. I'm gonna hand back to Amy. Thank you, Nikki. Um, now it's time for us to hear from um, our second student. Um, we're going to be hearing from Joanna Lee, who's um, currently studying a BTEC in Performing Arts at East Coast College. And again, she's going to talk to you about her experiences at the college. Um, so Joanna, if I can pass over to you. Um, hello, my name is Joanna Lee and I'm a second year student on the uh, level 3 performing arts course at East Coast College. Um, so a few years ago I joined a theatre company outside of the college which is run by the course leader and whilst I was doing the show I heard a lot about um, the course and what the college has to offer and I thought wow this sounds absolutely incredible. So I auditioned and got a place on the course and I must say it's been an an incredible experience um, there's so many performance opportunities and we're like a little community so um, everyone on the course is there to support each other um, the teachers are absolutely incredible um, they're always there to support you if you're struggling and although we do group classes it's like they they give you personal feedback so you can work on yourselves and I think that is incredible. Um, so I've personally found the course has been very, um, it's had a very positive impact on me. Um, for example, I didn't really think about going to university. Um, I was a bit unsure of what I wanted to do. Um, I always knew that I that I wanted to do performing arts but I wasn't sure of where I would go um, but in September I will be attending the University of Chichester where I will be training in musical theatre performance and then from there I will have a career in musical theatre um, and I must say I, I really wouldn't be going if it wasn't for my incredible incredible tutors um, the college is uh, amazing <laughs> because the facilities are just incredible. So you've got very big spaces uh, to perform. The dance studio is very big, so you can have plenty of room to move. The theatre can host um, fairly big shows. And we've got um, a very big scenic construction room as well, where you can um, build some of your scenery and do some classes in there. Um, we also have some little um, rooms where you can go and rehearse on your own if you would like. Um, and yeah, sorry I'm losing my words today. Um, but the course is so incredible and it really is suited for everyone. So if you haven't had a lot of experience in performing arts, but you enjoy, say, music or anything to do with the arts, then this is perfect for you. But even if you have had experience, then it's great for you too, because 
everyone kind of learns from each other and as I said before the teachers are just absolutely incredible um, they're always there to help you and make your experience personal um, there's also a few opportunities to improve your CV as well so I am I've been the course leader for um, two years and I'm also a student ambassador um, and from doing these things you can improve your CV you can learn some extra training that the college provides there's just so so many opportunities with East Coast College um, it's definitely something worth looking into um, thank you for listening and I really hope you consider attending East Coast College that's brilliant thanks ever so much Joanne it's lovely to hear such positive experiences and um, good luck with university as well I'm sure that will all go well um, so that brings us to the end of our presentations and now we're going to move on to a question and answer session so as I said um, before there's a, a box at the bottom of your screen that should say Q&A um, if you've got any questions please feel free to type those in there um, we've already had a couple through so I'll start working through those but please feel free to ask any more um, and we'll ask everybody who's um, joining us in the video to um, jump in and, and answer any um, questions that are relevant to their area. So um, let's have a look at what we've got so far. So um, one of the first questions we've got is, um, oh, this sounds like it will be one for you, Rachel. Rachel leads our apprenticeship team. Um, are employers still taking on apprenticeships at the moment? Yeah, so obviously there's been unprecedented times with the impact upon COVID. Um, it's been very positive at the moment where we're continuing to work with employers that have got existing apprentices and um, we've had very few employers saying that they are not going to continue with their recruitment over the next year and it's been really positive that we've actually had new employers making inquiries about how they can recruit um, apprentices that they wouldn't have had in the past. Um, so I would say that there may be some delays in start dates, but it is very, very positive at the moment. Okay, um, while we've got you, Rachel, we've just had another one come in that says, how do we apply for apprenticeships? Okay, so apprenticeships, if you go onto the college website, the team have got their key phone number, or you can use the email that Nikki provided earlier, the hello email. Um, and they, the team are very supportive, they will work through what career aspirations the young person has, but also do support with matching as well, CV writing and helping with interviews. Brilliant, thank you. Um, we've had a question in, um, I'm not sure who's best to answer this one. What date is the start of term, please? Um, I don't know whether that, that's yet been decided, if anyone can, can help with that. Amy, I'll try and um, answer that. Um, so at the moment, we are working towards September starts. Um, we will be getting in touch with our students um, who, who are um, applicants um, to enrol them over the next um, few weeks and months. Um, so as we kind of go through that, we will keep in touch with our students to let them know actually when their start dates will be. Um, but we are we're working at the moment um, for our um, particularly our school leavers um, to be perhaps starting kind of um, September onwards. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Kerry, I think this is one for you. Um, Kerry Payne leads our higher education um, and she, uh, we've had a question that says, do you have a university on site? Kerry, are you able yeah. to answer that one? Yeah, that's fine, Amy. So hello, everybody. So um, essentially the answer is uh, yes, we do. We run over 35 different degree uh, university courses on site. Um, our courses are integrated into our college campuses, but there are many separated and specialist areas for our degree students. So there's that element of separation, both in terms of the learning environment and in the social spaces as well. I hope that answers that question. Brilliant, thank you. 
Um, someone else has asked, I've applied to Low Stuff Sixth Form College. Will I still have access to the facilities at East Coast College as well? Um, Nikki or Keith, are you able to help with that? Yeah, the answer is yes. Uh, you will have access to uh, both sites, yeah. Okay, great. Yeah, and as you heard earlier, we've got some, some fantastic facilities at both sites, so um, that's really useful. Um, someone's asked, do you have the opportunity to undertake any work experience whilst at college? Um, I'm not sure whether they mean for an apprenticeship or just a general course. Um, no, I can answer that for you. Um, so as part of the study programme, we promote work experience and industry placements for all students because the college really values the need to support students to develop their knowledge, skills and behaviour so they can actually become work ready. So we've got a dedicated team that will support short and long term placements. And this year and last year, we had over 50 percent of those students on extended placement actually gain in permanent employment or apprenticeships. So the, the strength of relationships with employers actually enhances everybody's learning. Brilliant, thank you, Rachel. Um, somebody's asked, I've applied for more than one course and I'm unsure on which one I want to do. Can I decide to do one and then change courses later on? And I'll ask that, Amy. Um, so if you're unsure, um, the best thing to do is to actually apply for, um, for the courses you're interested in because that gives you the opportunity to talk to those um, specialist tutors at interview um, and you've got time to speak to one of our careers advisors and if you're, if you're currently based at school, talk to your own careers advisor um, so you get, um, you get a really rounded um, amount of support to help you make those choices. Uh, we've got... Um, the, the virtual taster day is coming up, um, so current applicants will be invited to, um, to those um, at the end of June, which will just give a little bit more time for, um, for those students to join in on um, different course taster days um, to, to find out about those. We've also got on, um, for, the, for people who have applied, um, our, our Moodle, our virtual learning environment page is set up by the courses with activities that you can have a go at and it, you would have access to, um, to the different things that you're interested in there. So um, that's another thing that, um, that would kind of support you in making those choices. But essentially, actually, what we really want to do is make sure that you get onto the right course. So if you start on a course and you find that actually it's not exactly how you need, how you want it to be, then actually our team are there to support you to try and be flexible to, to get you onto the right thing for you. So the best thing to do is actually talk to us about it um, if, if, that's, if that's where you, you're at once you start. Brilliant, thank you. Um, we've got somebody here who is interested in the marine engineering course um, and they'd like to know how far along we are with aligning it to an apprenticeship to have placement with other companies. Um, is anyone able to help with that at all? Yeah, so um, we've got two options there. We do marine engineering apprenticeship with employers, but we're also launching um, the marine cadetship, which Kerry could provide you some updates with. Okay. Yeah, so thank you, Rachel. So yeah, we, we are planning and we're, we're mid-process in planning our marine engineering cadet programme. Our DEC cadet programme is up and running and ready for applications at the moment and is ready for a September start. But we'd be very interested to hear from anyone through the email address that Nikki mentioned for um, engineering cadets as well. We're hoping to um, be able to run that as soon as we possibly can. So please get in contact with us if you're interested and we can provide you with, with much more detailed information on a one-to-one -one basis. Brilliant, thank you both. Um, Keith, this is probably one for you. Um, how do I take an extra model when studying A-levels and how does it work? So I, I think obviously it's, you're talking about uh, extending on your modules. We would ask you to do uh, three A-levels uh, as a basics or uh, the equivalents in the BTECs. Uh, and so you're quite welcome to take four, but obviously that comes on with the yeah, the fact is that you've got to be busier and have more homework than the rest. But uh, obviously you can take on three, it's the standard. 
four, you can take four A-levels or four A-level equivalents. Uh, you know, as long as you, as I say, you appreciate it's going to be more work. I think that's what you're asking in the question. But if it's not, please, as I say, contact again and we're getting back to you. Great. Thank you, Keith. Um, a, a question here um, about funding. Um, somebody's asked, when do we need to apply for funding if we're starting a course in September? Um, and they've put in brackets that they're an older student. Okay, you can answer this one. Bye, everyone. Um, yeah, if you're an adult learner, so that's anyone who's aged 19 plus, uh, there are two sort of aspects of funding that you're probably looking at. The fees for your course and any discretionary funding that might help with the cost of coming to college. Um, with regards to the fees, it depends what level you're doing, but if you're looking at an advanced learner loan, the loans portal, which is dealt with through student finance, is open at the middle of this month, but you will need a letter from us as a learning provider with the information to apply for that. If you're looking at concessions on courses, you'll be advised about enrolment and what evidence we'd need to actually get a concession on your course. And if you're looking at discretionary funding, we're actually uh, releasing our online applications at um, some point in July. And you'll be able to apply online for any other aspects of funding you're looking to get help with. Brilliant. Thank you, Vanessa. Um, Somebody has asked, do you get a timetable when you come to college? I suppose in a similar way that you do at, at school. Um, Keith, you're nodding. Are you able to help with that? <laughs> Yes, uh, you would certainly get a timetable uh, when you come to the sixth form, and I think you'll get a timetable when you go to any any East Coast uh, course. Uh, we are working on the timetabling now, looking at the predicted numbers, uh, and so the fact is that these will be ready when you come in the first week in September. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Somebody's asked a transport question. Um, they live in the Saxmundan area and are wondering how they'll be able to get in will they have to take public transport? I, I assume that's a yes. Is, is anyone able to help with that? I can tell from experience from the uh, students who come from the Halesworth, Saxmundham area, and most of them do, uh, you know, brave the Greater Anglia train uh, in the morning. Uh, I know it's been very unreliable recently, and uh, it's not for me to say, don't take it or anything like that, but please take it. Hopefully it'll be much better. But uh, we will make allowances, uh, obviously, if you arrive late because, obviously, train cancellations. But my students do come from, uh, obviously, using the public transport. Um, Amy, if I can just add to that as well, student finance team uh, are on hand to um, support people individually with those questions. Um, because um, quite, quite a few students will, will kind of want to have support with how to work out the best transport routes for them and also the funding um, available with the costs of that there is support available and um, so I would encourage um, people to get in touch via the here to help .ac .east coast .ac .uk, um, email address and, and just ask ask those questions we can help you individually with those great thank you um, somebody's asked um, is there any work we can be getting on with before joining our course in September Nikki, I think you touched on that with the new Moodle pages, but if you could just... Um, just Yes, yeah, I did. So um, on, on the Moodle, the virtual learning environment that I mentioned, um, each course area has a page set up with some activities um, that, that, you can, that you can be getting on with, that you can be starting. Um, so if you haven't had a link um, to that yet, or you've just um, been an interview process and you, you're about to receive that link, uh, that will take you through. If you haven't had it yet, perhaps I can ask you to get in touch with us on the here to help um, e email address um, and then we can put you in um, in touch with that with that um, that link so you can start doing some of that work brilliant thank you um, somebody has asked are there any opportunities um, for future careers in the army through courses at the college is anyone able to help with that Yes, I, I can help with that. Um, so we run a uniform public services uh, course at level two and three at our lowest off campus. And that, that's one route that you could take uh, to get into, into that. I hope that, that answers that question. 
I can perhaps add to that as well, Holly, that um, actually um, we have a good relationship with the army and all the forces recruiters, actually. Um, so there are, there are quite a few different course options as well as very specific course that um, Holly's talked about as a as a progression route um, actually some of our um, engineering courses actually some of the A-levels um, it's quite a few of our uh, of our courses actually will, could lead you through to the forces and um, so I would suggest actually perhaps doing some research and the type of thing that um, you're interested in and actually we can help you look at the various routes to get you uh, to that end goal that you're interested in. Okay, thank you. Um, a question here for you, Keith. Um, does the sixth form offer a gifted and talented programme? Yes, it has a gifted and talented programme uh, uh, currently, uh, where we encourage obviously students who achieve very highly in their GCSE exams uh, to obviously look at their progression routes. We do trips to Oxford uh, and Cambridge. Well, Cambridge, not Oxford, they are, they're uh, obviously if you arrange them yourselves. But there is a gifted and talented program, but uh, we, we don't want to feel that it's elitist in the sixth form because all our students will get opportunities to go and visit universities and uh, we'll get some of this stuff which will stretch them in the curriculum. But there is a gifted and talented program at present, yes. Okay, um, thank you. Someone else has said, um, I have um, signed up to do sociology, but I no longer want to do that course. How do I go about changing it? Um, I suppose that's similar to what you said earlier, Nikki and Keith, yeah. about being able to apply for more than one thing and, and sort of changing as you go through. Yes, yeah. It's, if I put it from a six form perspective, because obviously if you applied for A level sociology, you no longer want to do this. Uh, there is no, there's nothing to say that you're signed up now, you can't change. We even give you two, three weeks uh, after starting your course because. Uh, we realise that many of you will start a course which you haven't actually taken in the GCSE, sociology being one of them. So if you don't like it, we let you have a try before you buy. As long as you tell us in the first three weeks that you want to change, we allow you to change as long as you also match the entry requirements to what you want to change to. But that can be done in the first two, three weeks of teaching or at the time of enrolment when we talk to you and you can change your minds. Because I know there'll be students who want to take up the offer of the new environmental science course, for instance. Um, if, if as a student you've already, a potential student you've already um, applied um, and you, if you'll have an email through from the admissions team. Um, so you can either go back to the admissions team that sent you the offer or you can email us on the um, here to help um, and we'll put you in touch with the admissions team um, and they, they can kind of start that process off um, for you if it's between now um, and that enrolment period. So we're, we're here to kind of support you with that all the way through summer. Brilliant, thank you. Um, Kerry, one for you here. Um, I've seen that you have access courses advertised on your website. What are they? Okay, so um, our access courses actually have the title Access to HE Diploma. So these courses are for students who are 19 and over, so they're considered for adult learners. And they're one-year programmes that prepare you for entry to a degree programme. So that could be one of our own degrees or one of um, the degrees across, across the country. The one year programmes are all equivalent to three A levels, so they provide you with the necessary UCAS points. They're very suitable for people who need to um, consider a career change or maybe haven't yet been able to undertake the education and learning that they've wanted to to progress into their relevant career. We've got six different pathways, so it's more than likely we can find a suitable pathway for you and your intended career progression routes. Um, and our students actually perform very well on these programmes and we've got really outstanding local progression to higher education. So if you've got any more questions, please get in touch and I can give you a more specific answer. Brilliant, thank you. Um, this question is um, slightly different, but similar to, to what we've already discussed about changing courses. Um, somebody says, I'm currently signed up to do A-levels. If after my first year I find that I'm not enjoying them, is it possible to switch over to the East Coast College campus to do a course there instead? The answer is yes. Uh, again, you obviously have to qualify for the uh, course you're going to. Uh, the, I, would, 
I know it sounds awful. I would hate to think that you waste a year on an A-level courses. Uh, uh, so really, as I say, I think you should seek advice before if you're unsure and make sure that you make a positive choice at the start so you don't have to do three years instead of two. Yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Keith. Um, someone's asked, do some courses have extra benefits such as gym access? Um, I think we've already touched on that a bit, haven't we? How um, students get access to the gym for free, but I suppose that sort of covers um, the facilities that each course has as well. And, and I suppose they get extra benefits with regard to the access to facilities there. So, um, Nikki, I don't know if you're able to say any more about that. Um, yeah, so um, there, we have um, courses with, that will access the, uh, the gym and the grounds for um, part of their course at public services um, support um, as examples and um, foundation students. Uh, but actually widening it out from that, um, quite a large range of our courses ac access those facilities for uh, various modules. Um, so they might use so childcare as an example or health and, safe, um, health and social care might use um, some of the spaces to, to run acti physical activities, for example. Um, so actually quite a few of our students are, are using um, those facilities. Um, just to widen it out uh, in terms of the community um, point of view, some of our um, students, particularly on the sports course, are actually um, provide support and training to, um, to young people from local schools who come in and use the gym. So they're getting that kind of real life experience in that, um, in that facility as well. I don't know if Holly wants to add any, anything else to that um, in terms of the course specifics. No, no, Nikki, I think you've covered that really well. Thank you. Um, someone just asked around timetables again, will they get to see them before they start at college or do they get issued um, sort of on their first day? Keith, what, what usually happens with the other six? With the sixth form, uh, we would normally uh, give you the timetable. You'll know what you'll be doing, you know, obviously the fact is the subjects you'll be doing, but the actual times in the actual week, we would normally give you uh, after the induction period. Uh, so it would probably be on your second day after an induction period in the uh, first week in September. Brilliant, thank you. Um, somebody's asked, um, what sort of courses do access learners go on to at university? Kerry, can you help with that one? Okay, so um, our students go far and wide and to many different career pathways. One of our most popular um, to tell you about are probably our allied healthcare professions. So many of our students have ambitions to be nurses, midwives or paramedic um, <clears throat> or paramedics um, and these prove to be very successful programs for our students. Our students also go on to a wide range of your more traditional subject degrees such as law, English, psychology, sociology and some of our students who undertake our counselling access programme actually go on to become counsellors. So they go on to our counselling degree programmes. We also offer access programmes in sport, um, sciences um, as well. So you can progress into those career pathways as well. Brilliant, thank you. Um, somebody's asked, um, I've had my interview for um, East Coast College, but I haven't yet received anything from the admissions team. Should I make contact with the college or should I wait to hear from you? Make contact with us, please. Uh, we'll, we can get straight back to you. Um, through the, um, the Here to Help email, perhaps Amy at the end, um, we, can, we can show the slide with that email address, um, just so people have got time to write it down. Um, to, or, it's on the website um, if, if you're not able to do that. Brilliant, thank you. Um, someone else is just wanting um, clarification about how they find their Moodle login. Um, Nikki, you can probably help with that. Um, yeah, again, if you can email us, we'll, we'll send you a link through because then that can just take you straight through to the pages. Okay, thank you. Um, let's just have a look, see if we've covered everything. Uh, oh, do you offer an enrichment programme for students? 
Um, yeah, I mean, perhaps if I start on that and then um, I can go to, um, to Pam and Holly just to kind of um, to fit some extra into it. Um, in terms of enrichment at the college, really, we look at it from quite a wide perspective in the various activities that students can get involved with to um, develop um, not only their ac academic um, and skills, um, but also their um, resilience, understanding some of the activities they want to get involved with, interests. Um, and build leadership skills, for, for example. Um, so I'll ask uh, Pam and Holly to come in on, on some of the um, those sessions being run by the course on the courses. But um, students can get involved with um, learning how to be um, leaders, about ambassadors, uh, mentoring. We run mentoring um, programs for for students. And we also teach them about restorative um, practice and approaches, uh, which is really kind of supportive uh, within friendship groups and learning kind of communication um, skills where students are interested to, to develop those. Um, we also work with our partners um, to deliver um, sessions for students around a, quite a wide variety of different activities. So uh, they might come in um, to look at health. So we've had kickboxing, for example, as, as a, um, a session that's available to students. Um, so it's kind of quite a range there. Um, so if perhaps if I go to um, to Holly and to Pam, perhaps you might be able to kind of add in some of those masterclasses um, that are taking place in some of your areas. I can certainly. Um, the, um, some of the other areas that I'm responsible for, I've been involved in um, community projects, there's um, engineering students that are involved with um, Duke of Edinburgh, um, we have the Special Olympics come in and the students, some of the students in the wider college volunteer um, with that, and we've been out to support, like I say, some of the community groups, as well as being involved in projects with the Wind Energy Museum, um and the broads authority so holly would you um yes yeah, so in some of the areas that i look after as well we um well in all of the areas we offer master classes so they're they are enrichment programs which um are embedded into your uh, study program which makes you more employable or allows you to to uh, access higher education later on um so some of those are um uh, nutrition, for instance, um, in our sports program, um, food and hygiene in our catering programs, customer service skills in our hair and beauty programs. So every program has a suite of master classes which will enrich your time at East Coast College. Brilliant, thank you. Um, just a couple more here, Kerry, um, about um, the degrees and higher education that we offer. Um, if I study higher education at the college, do I have to attend full time or could, can I work at the same time and, and juggle sort of learning and work? You can, you can definitely do both. Um, in general, our HE programmes would require you to attend two days a week. So you can um, definitely work alongside those programmes. Many of our programmes in higher education also are timetabled to take place on to one day and one evening a week. Um, which allows our students to continue working as well. So that's a definite yes. Brilliant. And, and just to follow up to that as well, someone else has asked, um, if I do higher education at the college, do I get more access to my teacher than at university? Um, and, and what are the other benefits of, of doing it here at the college instead of going away to university? Okay, so um, I would say you definitely get more access to your tutors than you would at a traditional um, bigger, larger university. Um, our uh, students are able to access our, our tutors pretty much 24-7, although we're quite often telling our tutors off for allowing that much access. Um, we have very small group sizes, which we think is one of our unique selling points, really. So our average group size for our degree programme would be about 10 students. This means that you know your tutors really, really well and you can have um, direct contact with them. We also have weekly tutorials that are part of all the degree programmes and you can choose um, not to engage in tutorials if you're progressing really well, but the access is always there for you. So I would say, yes, you definitely have a lot of access to your tutors and the small groups also benefit um, that access as well. Brilliant, thank you. Um, I think we've got our final question here. Um, will someone be in touch with me before September with dates of when we're starting, where we have to go, all that sort of information um, so that I know what's happening? 
Yes, yeah, absolutely. Um, so we want to try and make it as uh, make the transition into college um, as um, anxiety free for you as possible. Um, so the next, if you've already applied, the next step that you'll hear um, from us will be about coming to taste today's. Um, following that, um, you'll find out about when you'll enrol. Um, so keep an eye on emails because everything's going up by email, text um, and, and phone at the moment. Um, and then once you've enrolled, then you find out about your, your start time. If you're worried at any time and you haven't heard at, at those points, then you can get in touch with us and we can, we can help you individually. Um, but yes, you will, you will hear about the next step um, as we go through. Brilliant. Okay. So I think that brings us to the end of our presentation. Um, thank you everyone for joining us and thank you for all your questions. Um, both of our websites have got loads of information about all of the courses that we offer, how to apply and all of the information about funding and support that we've been through as well. Um, so make sure you take a look at those. Um, the addresses for both our websites are on screen as well as the um, contact numbers for um, any help you need and that here to help email that we've mentioned. So that's just here to help at eastcoast.ac.uk. And as we said, that works for both East Coast College and the Sixth Form College. So um, if you get in touch, then they'll be able to answer any questions you've got. Obviously, we've got all our social media pages as well. So there's loads of information that goes on um, those on a weekly basis too. So they're a great source of, of looking out for stuff. Um, so thanks again, um, everyone, for joining us. And uh, we hope to see you all in September.